Now, interesting enough on that tour, when I worked at Sam Ash, I met Devontae. I mean, Casey and them, they used to come to the store. This is before they signed their deal. And um, I remember when he got his, his uh, check, when they signed the deal with MCA, and I think the check was like for 47 to 49,000. He walked in the door and he was like, I was like, oh yeah, get the cart, let's go. But I remember he came back one time and we were having a conversation and he was telling me how he was a little upset because they wanted to take some of his music and give it out, I'll be sure, on his support a sophomore project. And he's like, hey man, but you know, like, yo, I'm trying to work on Jodeci, you know what I'm saying? They, they taking the songs from my group or whatever. And I was like, I, I listened to him. I said, man, those are some great problems to have. But I mean, <laughs> are you a one, are you a one hit wonder? He said, what do you mean by that? I said, well, you got to think, man. I'll be sure. He just tore up the airwaves with the end sales with that first album. You, it's kind of a, a no brainer. You realize if you put his voice and success on your music as a way of introducing yo, you guys, because once they hear Casey and JoJo, there ain't no knock on out, but he ain't dumb. He got a, they got a whole nother thing they coming with. You, you half of the battle will be done because they will have been familiar with your style of music and your production. I said, it's just me. I said, man, listen, I'll give him a song, kick, check, take the check and get back to the drawing boards. And, you know, because you're going to be successful either way, you know, a platinum out of artists and, and what you believe you guys are capable of doing, you know, and he's like, yeah, you know, you got a point, you know. But anyway, I didn't, I had, I had kind of fell off from, you know, we was in different circles. I was going Molly Mall, but he was on that tour. And the first night of the tour, you know, I was excited. I said, oh, man, you know, maybe I'll catch up with him, you know, while we out here. And the very first night of the tour, I think it was in Minnesota. And um, the band came out, oh man. <sighs> and so midway through the show, I think he wanted to body surf. <laughs> and he ran to the stage and jumped off the stage feet first. And I'm standing off, off side to side stage behind the curtain like, what? And, uh, and he, Drop kick like two or three girls, oh and he God. hit the floor. And in the crowd, you heard all this, all the whole arena was like, oh. and then the lights came up, and then here come Big Bob, who used to be NFL linebacker or something. And, and the, the security was these guys named the Bouye Tribe. They were actually a rap, rap group, but they were Samoans. You know, and these dudes, they coming through, you know, trying to get the Devontae because, you know, the girls at this time, I was, <laughs> If he had a lick of clothes on by the time they got to him, I'd be surprised. <laughs> so, you know, I'm thinking I'm off stage and like, you know, I had been on the road since LL. Okay. And I'm thinking, oh no, no, no. no. <laughs> Did he recognize you when you from the store? No, he didn't. I kind of stayed away because I needed to be focused on music and they were entertainers. So, it was groupy galore and all of that good stuff. And, you know, I'm a married, I was a married man, you know. Okay. It, was, uh, it wasn't until we got to, I think, Atlanta and our tour buses parked next to each other and he recognized me. And I was like, oh, hey, man. Yeah. You know, and he was like, yeah, man, we can ride, you can ride with us to the next city in there. Oh, <laughs> oh goodness. The, the, the. <laughs> but one man, listen, when this guy used to come to Sam Ash and, and he plays some stuff, one of the things I, I, I'm grateful, uh, thankful for is my disposition towards my talent. Um, people like him, uh, Lauren Dawson, who was also on that tour, um, the Corey Henry, the Travis Sells, the James Perrys, even Bernard, you know, these are uh, the Jesus Molinas. Uh, Kevin Powell's, Kevin Brown, you name them, man, these guys. I can only dream of the magnitude of talent that they had. But one thing that God instilled in me is there's nothing wrong with being acknowledged in somebody else's talent, mm -hmm. but never think less of what I've given you. You know, because while I can't do what they can do, I can do what I do. You know, and my gift is totally different, no greater, no less than, but 
not to be on the air where you can't, you know, see somebody and be like, wow, man, I really enjoyed, you know, your playing, man. I'm a big fan. I still, these guys don't know me. You know, I mean, they might know now because I'm launching a label and I had to make some reference to the label, the things I've done. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm in and out on their page. Like Mike Bur- Michael, uh, Mike Burrell, um, I saw him playing for Kim Burrell years ago on something they did in Louisiana after the Katrina. And this guy was on the work and killing it, you know. So I've been chiming in like a fan, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But if, I mean... I'm grateful for the things that I've been able to do, you know, in spite that I don't have that level of talent. But, yeah, but when 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 you when you're producing um, Janae's second album and and next, and you're getting producer credit and you know co-producer credit and, and remix credit, um, are you surprised with the success of the albums that you're doing? Do you, are you feeling like oh, okay, look at because the songs you did. Would say Jane on next, um, or you Jane again, bigger airplay, um, and and coming out of singles as well. How does what does that do to you when you know when your name is now recognized as a producer on hit records that are getting to the top 10? Well, for me, um, I've always, I've always liked the uh anonymity part, um, I've always thought that. Uh, the thing that I loved is having gone in arenas and they play a runaway girl or they play too close a record that I've done and I'm standing right in the aisle and people all around me are singing it and dancing it and they're not doing it because I'm standing there they're doing it because (laughs) they really like it they don't even know that I'm the guy that's partly responsible for some of that creation so Mm. it's honest it's honest. And so, like, Crush, I remember me, me and Renee were in the studio with KG, and we just got in this Rose. Me and K drove up to Boston or somewhere to get a Rose. Because, um, Rose Royce. No, Fender Rose. Oh, Fender Rose. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay keep and, um, we got it. And I was like, hey, man, you know, we're going to do, because, you know, we would play stuff and he would sample it and, and loop it and stuff. The dynamics that you, you know they do from the DJ world. So we were sitting there, and I started playing the the thing. You know, I was just playing around, and, and Renee was like, "What's that?" She said, "Oh no, do that again." You know, and I said this, and she's like, "Oh," and Kay jumped on the machine. The beat came together. Gene came in, and it became Crush. Wow. This guy's crazy. But I, what I love, not the, the, the notoriety side of it or the money side of it. Um, I used to always tell people, and I, I still believe this here, here today myself, you're only three minutes from changing the complexion of your life. That's how long it takes for one song to play that somebody likes. Mm-hmm. And whatever is going on in your life could change from those three minutes. And so I've, I've always anticipated um, you can do your best. You can uh, produce it. You can make sure the lyrics are tight, the backgrounds are stacked nicely. The, you know the music is mixed. You know, like me and Kay. I remember we, on all these albums that uh, we were doing, Kay had a Montero, a Mitsubishi Montero that had a crazy system in it, and uh, we would do the records, and then they burn us a CD. We would go downstairs in the parking lot and get in his truck and play a few albums that were out. And then we would play what we were working on and it had to hit and mix with everything else. And I was thinking to myself like, you know, this is crazy. Cause here's, they got these, we're talking about a multi $500,000 studio with all this esoteric gear, whatever. And the barometer of what's, what's gonna qualify being good is how it sounds in the truck. Mm-hmm. Not these hundred thousand dollar monitors, but a twenty thousand dollar system in the truck. You know, so that I learned that from him. That when you're listening to something, you know, it could be sound good, but that's that room. It needs you need to be you need to hear it where you hear most of your music because yeah. that's going to give you a general idea 
Because you could be in the studio like, oh, man, it's banging, it's booming. And you get in your car and be like, hmm. Hmm. So that's, I thought Kay was genius for that, man. And I do it here today. Uh, anything that I create when I'm working on stuff and and uh, just doing some levels or just some rough mixes, you know, I mean, uh, these ain't questions, but, you know, they're yeah. supposed to be reference. For I get in my truck. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of Halftime Chat. Please remember to subscribe, share, and comment. But most importantly, why don't you become a member of Halftime Chat? We've got amazing videos, amazing perks, and um, being able to support the channel. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. I never participated in that kind of hey, the somewhere in between. Us, or even loving us, on which I didn't miss you. Really. Uh, with, uh, you know, the upside of the world was like growing up. It is a